Hey guys, tonight we're going to talk about uh, working with source control from uh, Management Studio. Now, unfortunately, even though we have uh, Management Studio built on top of Visual Studio, we still don't have native access to source control. Yeah, whatever. So, <clears throat> uh, I've, I've already got source, con source control set up in here. But uh, what I'll do is I'll walk you through it real quick and I'll, I'll show you what you have to do to install it and where to find it. So there, in order to get Source Control in Management Studio, you have to have Visual Studio with a Team System client installed already. Okay, so you have to have, you know, Team Studio for DBAs or for testers or for software engineers or all the other other all, all the other flavors they have right so you have to have visual studio with team with, with with team system already installed on your box okay now in order to do this you 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 need to download the client provider and i believe that is mssc p mssc see i always forget this so I can come up here and go source control MSSCCI. Okay. So MSSCCI provider. There we go. And I'll just say right there. Okay. Download details for Visual for Visual Studio Team Foundation Server MSSCCI provider. That's what you're looking for. come up here in a second there we go okay so you come to the download page and you just download it as usual right there's no big deal but I just wanted to show you how to find it um, in case you don't know where to get it it's easy enough you can just run a Yahoo search okay <clears throat> so like I said if you try to install it and you don't have Visual Studio with team system installed on your box already it'll give you an error and tell you that that's a prerequisite so just go ahead and do it now because it's the only way you're going to be able to install. So okay, once you get that installed, um, you can come in here under source control. You can see that the provider is listed there. And then you can see it's set up for uh, environment settings for source safe, right? Because that's really what it is. I mean, at that point, you don't have the full functionality, the full rich functionality of TFS in Management Studio, right? All you can do is check stuff in and check stuff out, and you're, you're really limited in what you can do. Um, here I got my Corp Login ID that I'm using. Um, you can set some of your uh, checkout settings here, right? Now, to actually set your server, you'll come here to Source Control, and you're going to go open from source control servers and here's where you can enter in your server and you can say I'm, I'm going by IP because I'm over VPN a lot of times and it's just it's just easier to do things by IP so once I do that I can connect here you've got to pick a you've got to pick a project here is one yeah tell it to overwrite and there we go. Now over here, I have my refresh project with my queries. Okay? I can double click on the query and I can get my query and I can check it out for edit. The same way I do anything else, right? I can check out the file for edit. Um, you notice how here it's got the little the little closed lock icon on there. That means it's checked in. Yeah, I can check it out. See, and now I've got it checked out. And now I can check it back in again. You notice down here I've got my pending changes box as well. No comment, just check it in. There we go. Okay. And so <clears throat> now it comes down to how do you create content in SMS and manage that content and in, in a uh um, in TFS because what we've typically done is DBAs because <coughs> DBAs have have slightly different requirements than developers right I mean developers they they open up a file or two or maybe a maybe they'll open up a solution and they'll work with it you know all day or for half a day or for a couple hours right 
maybe even for several days. And then they'll check it in and they'll close it and they'll do their thing and they'll, you know, they're all working on the same solution at the same time and all of that. DBAs have different requirements though. Um, our stuff is a lot more uh, machine gun, right? We have a problem on this server and we usually run this code to discover the problem. So we open up this code, run it, and then close it real quick because we don't need it again. And then, you know, something else over here to check disk activity, and then something else over here to check CPU pressure, and then something else over here to see long-running queries. And so, you know, and something over here to check backups, right? Something over here to, to look at the security thing, <clears throat> or to, to change a, a security something. DBAs are always uh, going from one thing to the next, from one thing to the next, and we don't have, <clears throat> you know, we have a, a much more immediate need for things to change than the developers do who will open up something and work with it for a long time. So typically the way we've done that when we want to share code, right? Because you got a whole team of DBAs, let's say you get, you know, a whole you know, let's say you get five of, you know, five DBAs or hell even three DBAs, right? <clears throat> and you get some troubleshooting code that works. Well, you all want to be able to share that. You all want to be able to be working from the same code because, you know, when you're working from the same code, then, you know, everybody knows what to expect. Everybody's looking at the same thing. Everybody can be trained on it, and it's just that easy. And if you make changes to it, then everybody sees the changes, right? So you want to be able to pull all this stuff from a, a central location. And typically the way we've done that in SQL is through Template Explorer, right? In past versions, you could... Uh, like when it was in Query Analyzer, you know, you could set this to a, a network location and then you could put all your code there and ever all the DBAs points at all, all the DBAs point at that network location <clears throat> and then they can all see the shared code. Well that's not possible anymore because they took the, the config value away from us here. So we can no longer specify where this code is stored, so it's always stored locally. So since they've since they've clipped those legs out from under us, right? Then now we have to go to, let me close this, now we have to go to TFS or some other external code, uh, code vault solution, right? Code sharing solution. So I'm showing you how to use TFS today. Um, so how you do this, you notice how this has queries in here, right? So, you know, what I can do is start up a new solution. And I can come in here and say new... Let's start up a new project, SQL Server Scripts, that's a really good thing, and we'll say um, my test scripts. No, let's do something a little bit better. Let's say um, production troubleshooting, right? And I'm going to add it to source control. Yep, on that server and I want to put it under the DBA prod exactly so here I have yeah 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 huh, look at that okay but it still added the files anyway even though it gives me the error it still added the files anyway see they're there so <clears throat> now I've got queries here I can say new query And now, I can come here, I'll select CDC, and I'll just say star from users, right? That's all I care about. Oh, users isn't even a table. What the hell am I talking about? Sys users. There we go. So select star from sys users, right? So I can save that. And I've got it checked in. I mean, I've got it checked out. Duh. So, I can come here and say check in the solution. All right, that'll be completed. So, I'm going to plug and return the following error. Initialize failed. Yeah, well, not too terribly surprised about that. It looks like it's going to make me restart that after all. Let me save that. And I'll go ahead and restart. Don't you love that? See, it's it's also uh, not super stable either. There we go. 
let's see what we have here. From source control. Sure, go ahead. But you can see for DBAs, this isn't a fabulous solution. We've got to jump through way too many hoops to open up our code. So, you know, if you're going to do something like this, then, you know, I would keep the Solution Explorer open over here with your project at the beginning of the day and just, you know, leave it. Leave it open as much as you can. This is going over VPN, so that's why it's taking so long. There we go. Actually... I'll open up that one. All right, let's see. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see if we can get something going here. Item is not controlled. All right, that's what I like to see. So I just reloaded the project, right? I mean, what else are you gonna do? Let's see what we got here. Let's double click on that. Okay, so I got that. Good. Let's save it. See if I can get it to check in now. I'll add a comment. There we go. And now we see our little lock there. <clears throat> so you can see there are you know, it's not a super rich environment for us, but it's it's really all they've given us. There are some third-party stuff out there that aren't as heavy, but, you know, the plugins into SMS probably wouldn't be much better. Um, uh, there are some ones completely outside of SMS, but, you know, they're outside of SMS. I mean, they're only going to be as good as they can be, right? So, um, also, uh, I've got the Source Control Explorer open here. Um, so I can change source control right here, but there is uh, one right here that says uh, Launch Team Foundation Server MSSCCI Provider. When you hit this button, Visual Studio comes up. I said Visual Studio comes up. I guess it's thinking. So, okay, there it goes. It just came up. So, <clears throat> there you go. Uh, let me close that again. Okay, so, that's uh, those are really the basics of working with uh, source control and SMS. Um, it's not really rich. Uh, I hope they do something about it in the next version because, like I said, this is you know built on top of, of a Visual Studio shell so we should be able to get native source control um, I should be able to get the source control explorer and all that but instead all I get is you know my one little uh, you know my, my one little project at a time here my one little solution at a time but I'm likely to put my queries all in one spot you know so I would take this and say um, you know I'd make that sys users yeah So you can see, you know, doing anything requires a couple clicks and, you know, every now and then the IDE crashes. At least it does on my box. Um, and I had it on a couple other boxes before and it, did the, and it behaved the same way. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's, that's what you got for TFS and Management Studio. And, uh, you know, use it or don't. I mean, it's really all you've got. So, you know, if you want this kind of thing, you know, use it. And it works the same way here as it does with uh, Visual Source with VSS. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this is the same VSS provider that you would install. Uh, it's the same provider, more or less, that you would install if you had VSS. So, you know, it's all good. Anyway, take care.